Let's continue. Cervantes gives us the image of Don Quixote imitating his heroes with two comic touches. He remains still for a while and ponders which path to take. And then, when he finally decides to let fate decide by letting go of Rocinante's reins, the horse follows his instincts by heading back to his stable. But Rocinante never makes it. The next adventure takes us to the other end of the spectrum of the commercial world. Here Don Quixote faces off with a group of Toledo traders who are headed, and this should not surprise us, to Murcia to buy silk. The episode is a quick sketch of both the history and the economy of the area. A trade route between Toledo, the ancient capital of the Spanish Empire, and Murcia, a town in the heart of the Moorish region, famous for its silk industry, and a Mediterranean port with access to a range of exotic products from the Orient. Both the arrogant determination of Don Quixote and the crazy melodramatic logic of his fanciful cause are laughable. Everyone halt, unless all of you confess that in the whole world there is no more beautiful maiden than the Empress of La Mancha, the peerless Dulcinea del Toboso. The merchants stop, and we notice another cinematic marvel. We can almost hear the hooves of their horses settling as the Toledans decide what to do next. What's this all about? One of the merchants decides to play with Don Quixote in a most ingenious way. Show her to us, for if she be as beautiful as you suggest, we will gladly and freely confess the truth. Don Quixote replies immediately, What virtue would you gain from confessing such an evident truth? What is important is that without seeing her, ye believe, confess, affirm, swear, and defend said truth. If you do not, then you are to do battle with me, impudent and arrogant people. The merchant will not yield. Your worship is requested to show us a portrait of this lady, even if no bigger than a grain of wheat. And with that, we will be satisfied and assured. He goes further. I think we're already so partial to your view that even if this portrait reveals that she be blind in one eye and dripping blood and sulfur from the other, nevertheless, to gratify your worship, we will affirm all that you wish. That's it. Don Quixote has had enough. She drips not, you vile rabble. She drips not, I say, that which you say, but rather only amber and musk preserved in cotton. But you shall pay for the blasphemy which you have uttered. The episode ends in carnival when Rocinante stumbles and Don Quixote, who falls with him, cannot get to his feet due to the weight of his ancient weapons. And yet he keeps on challenging his enemies. Flee not, cowardly, slavish people. Eventually, one of the mule drivers can take no more. He took the lance, and after smashing it to pieces with one of these, he began to pound our Don Quixote with so many blows that notwithstanding and in spite of his armor, he milled him like threshing wheat. Please make a note of this last verb. This is all very funny but let's consider the essence of the confrontation. The noun confession and the verb to confess occur five times in the dialogue between Don Quixote and the mocking merchant. And our Hidalgo attributes his rage, his fury, his anger to the blasphemy of his enemies who refuse to believe in what he says. There is something inquisitorial about Don Quixote here and our merchants express doubts typical of Moors and Jews unwilling to accept certain dogmas of the Catholic faith especially those having to do with that flawless woman who gave birth to God. In other words, the Reconquista is still underway, and Don Quixote asserts a parody of the religious values of what historians have called the confessional state of the Counter-Reformation. And what was the essence of the Reconquista and the Inquisition, if not a kind of revenge by poor old Christians from the North against rich merchants in the South, mostly Arabs and Jews? This might be a simplification of history, but the episode is based on it. To review, consider how quickly, over the course of one chapter, Don Quixote switches from an heroic defense of an innocent child who suffers a brutal beating in the woods to an imperious inquisitor determined to impose his faith on some merchants on the royal road between Toledo and Murcia. Meanwhile, Dulcinea del Toboso has been transformed into the Empress of La Mancha. These are ominous events that force us to question our impulse to identify with history's most famous knight errant. Sometimes he is noble and independent and fights against the barbaric standards of his day. Other times, he is a menacing conformist who would seem to be nothing less than the long arm of the most reactionary of laws. But it's funny, and in the end, the fact that Don Quixote is left 
pulverized and practically destroyed is all Rocinante's fault, right? 